A mystery interstellar object that has come from beyond our solar system. Astronomers thought 3i Atlas was the most shocking interstellar object ever seen. But then came something far larger, an object 100 times bigger, blazing into our solar system with a tail so massive it dwarfs everything in its path. NASA's first reports describe it as unprecedented, but whispers behind the scenes paint a darker picture. Is this a natural giant or the arrival of something engineered? One truth is clear. This new visitor has stunned NASA into silence. The discovery that shook the sky. It began quietly on September 12, 2025. The SOHO spacecraft, a workhorse of solar monitoring, flagged a faint anomaly on its SWAN instrument. At first, analysts thought it was noise, a misreading caused by background solar wind fluctuations. But as the data cleared, something startling emerged, a new object glowing with a brilliance that outshone comets many times its size. Within 48 hours, Australian comet expert Michael Matiazzo captured the first ground-based images, and what he saw left the astronomy world in disbelief. Spanning across the sky was a colossal tail, two and a half degrees long, the width of five full moons side by side. Compared to the faint, thin plume of 3i Atlas, this new visitor looked like a titan. The International Astronomical Union acted swiftly, designating it C-2025R2 Swan, a name that now resonates with both awe and unease. But behind the scientific labels, a darker realization spread. This wasn't just another comet-like object. It was a visitor of staggering scale, one that redefined what astronomers thought was possible. What made it even more chilling was timing. Just as scientists were still grappling with the unexplained behavior of 3i Atlas, its sunward plume, its propulsion-like tail, Swan R2 arrived almost in tandem, two interstellar objects both massive, both bizarre, converging on the sun at nearly the same time. For seasoned observers, the odds of this happening by chance were microscopic. Some whispered it wasn't coincidence at all. As the story leaked into public channels, social media exploded with theories. Was Swan R to a fragment of Atlas, a mother ship arriving to retrieve its scout, or a rival machine sent from elsewhere in the galaxy? Even established voices like Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb admitted the object's size and timing raised red flags. We are watching a drama unfold in real time, he told one outlet. For NASA, the pressure mounted. Their official press release stuck to the cautious language of science. A comet, unusual in brightness, with an orbit still being refined. But the silence, on its extraordinary size, only fueled suspicion. Why downplay the discovery of an object 100 times bigger than Atlas? And this was only the beginning, because what Swan R2 revealed next would turn a shocking discovery into a terrifying mystery. If its size stunned astronomers, the strange composition of Swan R2's core would leave them speechless. A core unlike anything seen before. When NASA's first spectrographic scans of Swan R2 arrived, the numbers didn't just surprise scientists, they alarmed them. Typical comets are a mix of water ice, carbon monoxide, dust, and trace metals. But Swan R2 defied every expectation. Its chemical fingerprint was dominated by carbon dioxide, eight times richer than water, an imbalance so extreme it had no precedent in solar system comets. Even more unsettling, the scans revealed enormous amounts of nickel vapor, but with a conspicuous absence of iron, a combination unknown in nature. Nickel without iron is a red flag. In planetary formation, the two metals usually occur together, forged in stellar furnaces side by side. To find one in isolation, in such high purity, suggested an unnatural process. The kind of refined blend you might expect from industrial engineering, not cosmic randomness. For some observers, this was the first real clue that Swan R2 might not be a simple comet at all. Then came the energy reading. Instruments detected what looked like a plasma shield, a field of charged particles enveloping the object like a protective bubble. The levels were off the charts. 
bending solar wind and deflecting radiation as if it were actively managing its environment. No known comet, asteroid, or natural body produces such an effect. Plasma fields belong to advanced laboratories and experimental drives, not frozen lumps of rock. The comparisons with 3i Atlas became unavoidable. That object already shocked scientists with its possible nuclear-like power source and propulsion-like plume. But Swan R2 was something far grander. Its electromagnetic aura, its metal-rich core, and its colossal size made Atlas look small, like a drone compared to a fortress. If Atlas hinted at technology, Swan R2 screamed it. In private circles, some NASA insiders allegedly began using a chilling phrase, engineered presence. It was a diplomatic way of admitting what nobody dared say publicly, that Swan R2 might not be natural at all. And if it wasn't, then every assumption about why it had come here was now in question. But the core was only the first shock. What stunned observers most was the object's terrifying power output. A power source beyond comprehension. If the composition of Swan R2 was unsettling, its energy readings were nothing short of terrifying. Using infrared and radio instruments, NASA and JPL analysts confirmed what independent teams had already begun whispering. This object was radiating power at levels no natural body should produce. 3i Atlas had already rattled the scientific community with what looked like a 10 gigawatt nuclear core, a figure 50 times the output of Chernobyl. But Swan R2 eclipsed that by orders of magnitude. Its plasma core was estimated at over 10,000 gigawatts, energy on par with two colliding black holes scaled down into a single machine. The numbers didn't make sense. How could any natural comet contain and regulate that kind of energy without tearing itself apart? Avi Loeb, never one to shy away from bold theories, called it a plasma fortress. In his view, the object's glow wasn't simply sunlight reflecting off ice. It was active, controlled radiation, perhaps the byproduct of a massive plasma engine or shield system. To the naked eye, Swan R2 flared with a brilliant white-green light. But to sensitive instruments, the flare shifted in color as though it were deliberately modulating thrust. That detail sent chills through mission control. Color shifts like this aren't random. They looked like thrust mix modulation, the kind engineers use when balancing different fuels in an advanced propulsion system. In other words, Swan R2 appeared to be steering itself. The implications were staggering. If true, this meant the object wasn't merely drifting through space, nudged by gravity and solar winds. It was navigating, choosing its path with precision. A power source this large, paired with controlled thrust, placed it far beyond anything humanity has ever built. Even our most advanced nuclear carriers or space stations would be dwarfed by its output. But here's the detail that truly haunted analysts. The object wasn't accelerating randomly. Its bursts and modulations lined up perfectly with gravitational assists, as if it understood, or had been programmed to exploit, the most efficient orbital mechanics in our solar system. But the power wasn't the only thing that raised alarms. The orbit Swan R2 followed revealed a secret even more disturbing. An orbit that defies chance. When orbital simulations for Swan R2 were first released, they seemed impossible. Instead of swooping in at a steep angle, like most interstellar objects, Swan R2 approached almost perfectly aligned with the ecliptic, the thin plane where Earth and the other planets circle the Sun. Even stranger, its path mirrored that of 3i Atlas, two separate objects from different directions of space arriving in near synchrony on near parallel tracks. The odds? Less than 1 in 20,000. For planetary scientists, this wasn't just unusual, it was deliberate. Swan R2's orbit will carry it within 150 million kilometers of the Sun, almost exactly when 3i Atlas passes at 203 million kilometers. On a cosmic scale, the two objects will skim past the Sun, almost side by side, hidden from every Earth-based telescope by the Sun's blinding glare. The timing couldn't have been more ominous. NASA analysts 
ran thousands of Monte Carlo simulations, randomizing the entry vectors to see if coincidence could explain it. Time after time, the simulations failed. Statistically, these two visitors shouldn't have appeared together, yet here they were, overlapping orbits, overlapping timing, converging in October 2025. The conspiracy forums went into overdrive. Was this a rendezvous? Was Swan R2 a mothership arriving to meet its smaller scout? Or was it the opposite, a rival sent to intercept Atlas before it reached its destination? Even seasoned astronomers admitted privately that the geometry felt engineered. Then came the most unsettling revelation. Swan R2's orbital period wasn't hyperbolic like 3i Atlas, it wasn't just passing through. Instead, its path revealed a bound orbit of 22,554 years. That meant this wasn't the first time Swan R2 had visited the solar system, and it wouldn't be the last. For all of human civilization's recorded history, it had been absent. But long before the pyramids, long before agriculture, Swan R2 had already passed once before. If it returned on such a cycle, then the October 2025 encounter was no fluke. It was part of a schedule. The question was chilling. What could possibly require a return every 22,000 years? But history may hold the answer, because evidence suggests Swan R2's last visit may have left a mark on ancient civilization itself echoes in ancient history. When scientists realized Swan R2's orbital period was roughly 22,500 years, archaeologists and theorists couldn't help but notice the eerie coincidence. That timeline placed its last solar pass at the very end of the Ice Age, a period when humanity suddenly leapt forward in ways we still struggle to explain. Megalithic structures appeared, agriculture flourished, and sky-watching cultures began carving celestial patterns into stone. Could it be coincidence, or had an ancient visitor left more than just a streak of light across the heavens? Some researchers point to the Great Pyramid of Giza, whose shafts align with Orion's belt and other constellations. Others mention Gobekli Tepe in Turkey, a mysterious temple complex more than 11,000 years old, decorated with symbols some interpret as astronomical charts. The timing fits. Swan R2's last approach would have blazed across the sky with a tail five times the width of the full moon. Ancient people may not have understood its chemistry, but they would have seen its brilliance and recorded its passage in myth, architecture, and ritual. Alternative historians go further, suggesting Swan R2 wasn't just observed, but interacted with. Graham Hancock and others argue that many ancient civilizations spoke of sky gods who descended during times of great change, bringing knowledge of farming, mathematics, and star maps. If Swan R2 was more than a comet, if it was a machine, then perhaps humanity's first great leap was nudged by a returning visitor. NASA and mainstream archaeologists dismiss such connections as pseudoscience, but silence lingers in the gaps. Why are so many ancient monuments aligned not just to stars, but to celestial cycles measured in tens of thousands of years? Why do myths from Egypt to Mesoamerica speak of fire-tailed serpents and radiant beings descending from the sun? And now, thousands of years later, Swan R2 is back. The cycle repeats. The question gnaws at scientists and the public alike. Is this a coincidence of orbital mechanics or a scheduled return? A cosmic appointment humanity has unknowingly kept for millennia. But even more chilling than history's echoes are the signals emerging from Swan R2 right now. Patterns that look less like nature and more like communication. Signals in the silence. As Swan R2 neared the sun, telescopes detected something even stranger than its colossal size or blinding tail. Hidden in the infrared bands were pulses of light, repeating at precise interval. At first, analysts dismissed them as artifacts, interference from solar activity. But further decomposition revealed the truth. The pulses followed prime number sequences, the same universal signature SETI scientists have proposed as the simplest form of communication. If this was coincidence, it was the most extraordinary coincidence ever recorded. But the deeper scientists looked, the harder it became 
to call it random. The gaps between the bursts weren't static. They shifted, lengthened, and then returned, as though waiting for a reply. For some, the implication was immediate. Swan R2 wasn't just a visitor. It was listening. The military's reaction was swift. Within 48 hours of the Pulse discovery, the US Navy and Space Force redirected classified satellites and rumors spread that the X-37B space plane had been quietly launched on an emergency mission. Official channels remained silent, but leaks suggested the object had been moved into a new category, technological unknown of extraterrestrial origin. In other words, not a comet, not a rock, something else. Meanwhile, conspiracy forums lit up with theory. Was Swan R2 a surveillance node cataloging every radio wave and transmission humanity had ever leaked into the galaxy? Was it a probe responding to the Voyager Golden Records, arriving just as our earliest interstellar messages reached distant stars? Or was it something darker? A machine designed not to observe, but to decide. Politicians couldn't ignore it either. Elon Musk joked on X that Swan R2 was the alien mothership we've been waiting for, while Donald Trump, at a rally, warned that Biden's NASA is hiding the truth about a foreign power in the sky's mainstream media tried to stick to the safe script of unusual comet, but the internet had already decided. Memes spread faster than press releases. Swan R2 wasn't a comet anymore, it was a harbinger. And through it all, the signals continued. Pulses flickered like a distant heartbeat, prime numbers etched into cosmic light. To scientists, it was the closest thing to a handshake humanity had ever seen. To governments, it was a potential threat. To ordinary people, it was a mirror, forcing us to confront how fragile our understanding of the universe really is. The truth is simple and terrifying. An object 100 times bigger than 3i Atlas has entered our solar system. It burns with impossible power, shields itself with plasma, and pulses like a beacon. NASA may call it Swan R2, but the real question is, what does it call itself? If this is communication, then humanity's silence may already be an answer. The countdown has begun, and the universe is no longer indifferent. Something has arrived, and it is watching. The impossible trajectory. From the very first orbital calculations, astronomers realized Swan R2 was breaking every statistical expectation. Most interstellar objects arrive on steep, chaotic paths, slicing above or below the planetary plane. But Swan R2, it slid into the solar system almost perfectly aligned with Earth's orbital plane, tilted by only a few degrees, a chance occurrence with odds of less than one in 5,000. What made it more unnerving was the sequence of close planetary approaches predicted for the coming months. Swan would skim past Mars, then Venus, and later brush near Jupiter, threading a path so deliberate that even the most skeptical dynamicists paused. One analyst described it as a cosmic threading of the needle. In their models, the chances of a natural object hitting this lineup were vanishingly small. As more data poured in, whispers spread through research groups. Was Swan R2 navigating? Its path looked less like random chance and more like a flight plan, carefully designed to maximize solar energy and gravitational assists. If true, that would imply some form of control and not just crude bursts of gas, but precise maneuvering across hundreds of millions of kilometers. For planetary defense teams, this wasn't just an astronomical puzzle. It was a wake-up call. If Swan R2 could maintain such accuracy on its inbound leg, then its outbound trajectory after perihelion might also be intentional. But to where? Toward the asteroid belt, a distant exoplanet system, or perhaps right back toward Earth itself. The truth of its path remains hidden, but one fact is undeniable. Swan R2 isn't just drifting through space, it's moving with purpose, and that purpose could change everything. Thanks for watching another episode. While you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.